Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to System Cutters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again with another late Friday stream. When I say late, I don't mean late in the day. I mean late starting, as usual, uh, where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with uh, for the week. And this week is no exception. Um, let me see if I can make this chat just a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. Yeah, once again, I'm having to deal with the the tyranny of the broken USB-C port on my uh, other laptop that I normally use to drive the stream. So I'm having to like set up things at the last minute on a second computer to uh, set up everything the right way to get stream chat and everything else. But uh, it seems to be working okay. Can everybody hear me? I'm guessing they can hear me because otherwise people would be saying something by now. So um, a little bit under the weather today. My daughter had a virus from school for, I don't know, a week now. And I finally, you know, got the privilege of, of catching that. So if I sound a little bit weird, that's why. But uh, I'm happy to be here. I always enjoy uh, being able to uh, hang out with the folks in the chat. And uh, let me just say hello to the folks who are here so far. Uh, let me get to the YouTube screen. Uh, let's see. We've got DJ Cthulhu, Wade. Um, uh, Yash, uh, Ryborg, Jake, uh, let's see, Christopher, Fikri, uh, Fear For Us, uh, yes, and then on the IRC side, I see Cow and Fade, Ashraz, uh, Jeff, Glenn, Peter, uh, I guess that's Seven Majesty, maybe, and Dave, and Redacted. Thank you so much for being here, folks. And Almoveja as well on the YouTube side. And Richard. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a, what's a common question which has never been revealed? I don't know. Redacted says, how did you get a virus on an air gap system? I don't I don't have an air gap system. I'm I'm just like connected to the world here. And uh Seven Majesty says it's, it's pronounced we. Okay, good. Good to know. We Majesty. All right. Cool. So um, let me just go over some news really quickly. Huh. Thank you, Left Pads, as alternate vet. Thanks, alternate vet, for the reminder on that. Uh, Ashraz points out an important thing in the uh, YouTube chat that you can join the IRC side of the live stream chat on uh, Libra chat, irc.libra.chat in the systemcrafters live channel, and also the systemcrafters.net slash live link. Um, if you want to get in on the IRC chat, the IRC chat is the one that's showing up on the screen right now. So this is an example of, an, of a bot like we're going to talk about today, uh, but we're going to be working on a different bot today. But uh, if you want to get on the screen here, you could definitely go to the IRC chat to, uh, to join up on that. Uh, Big Edie says, has the HTML injection virus been ironed out? I think you have your answer now. Thank you to Benoit for fixing that. <laughs> yeah, we can't be running around with uh, HTML injection attacks on the live chat. It just shows how sloppy I can be whenever it comes to uh, my little crafting projects. That's, that's basically the way it has to go, right? You work on something really quickly to get it working, and you're like, yeah, cool, it works. And then you forget about all the possible ways it can go wrong until it does go wrong. And then uh, you have a big uh, pie in the face. That was an elegant solution at that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty simple. I should have, I should have known to do it uh, beforehand. Uh, anyway, I wanted to point out that the System Crafters Forum was launched last week. If you haven't checked that out yet, definitely go check it out. We've been having a lot of fun there over the last week, just chatting about various system crafting topics. Um, and I, I want to do a lot more stuff on the forum uh, going forward. I haven't really like started organizing things correctly yet because I've been busy with other things this week. Uh, but we will get a better forum organization going soon. Um, where it's clear how to post things related to various different topics and also instructions about like where you should post things. I, I really want people to come here to chat about the topics we talk about on the channel and in the community, but also to share things you've been working on um, and even things that aren't necessarily system crafting related because, you know, people have different interests. So there might be like a certain section of the forum that is um, for a little bit more off topic sharing of, of projects and whatnot. So um, definitely check out the forum. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's been going so far. It's, it's a nice, uh, nice place to hang out. It's a good 
combination to the, um, or I guess good pairing for the IRC and Matrix chats because you can um, have more longer form co conversations and ask uh, ask and answer questions, etc. Oh, thanks, uh, Ashraz, for, for for pasting that. If people want to leave a comment on that, sh you sure can. Thank you. I should I should be doing that actually. I should be leaving uh, links to the l live streams every week. But at, this week I was out of time, didn't do it. I was spending a lot of my time working on uh, the second week of the uh, Guile Scheme course that I'm putting on right now. And that's going to be a lot of fun. If those of you who are in the uh, Guile Scheme, hands-on Guile Scheme for Beginners course right now, I've got the ex the exercises pretty much finished for the second week. I decided to go with the exercises first and then fill in all the rest of the content just to make sure that everything's covered effectively. And uh, I think that was probably a uh, probably a good idea because some of these things you need to have like a clear result that you're looking to get people to and then you need to know exactly what you need to explain to get them there um so that's going to be on sunday for those of you who are involved that you probably already knew that i also wanted to say that there's a bunch of cool announcements coming over the next few weeks um not really time to talk about them yet but um i've been working on a lot of things behind the scenes for the past month or two and uh, i feel like uh, it's going to be a, a, a good year for System Crafters. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm not getting sponsored by anyone. That's that's not what it is. So, <laughs> Sponsorship for this channel is kind of a weird thing. Like, what what company or product would be appropriate to sponsor this channel? I mean, we had, you know, Mastering Emacs, um, uh, Mickey Peterson setting up the, like the affiliate link, which is cool and definitely, you know, fits in with the, the topics and the culture of the channel. But, you know, other things like that is not likely to happen or other things that you normally see people uh, getting sponsored by on channels. Let's see. Um, uh, Jeff says, how do we use a form from Emacs though? There isn't a way right now. Uh, Benoit says, EWW, you can read the form from EWW, but you can't uh, post anything because all the posting infrastructure and logging in requires JavaScript. So um, Pavel, uh, AKA square root minus one. Is that right? Square root minus one. Anyway, Pavel has been looking into possibly writing an Emacs package for Discord. Someone um, had been working on something like that a long time ago, but I don't think it went anywhere. Yeah, exactly. We're not getting uh, Squarespace or uh, Raid Shadow Legends or anything like that sponsorship-wise because, I mean, the only way... Oh, Square Root minus one, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Did I say that? I, th I think I said that, right? Anyway... It would be funny to take such a sponsorship just as a joke, but I don't think they would appreciate that. Because I could have some fun doing a Raid Shadow Legends promo uh, and just completely be sarcastic about it. But I don't think I don't think they let you do these things. Okay. So um, today, what I wanted to do, the stream is sponsored by Oracle. That sounds completely ominous. It's like saying my stream is sponsored by the Death Star. So today, uh, what I want to try to do is write an IRC bot with Guile Scheme. Um, I've already sort of done something like this. I mean, the, the chat that you see on the screen right now is actually Guile Scheme code that's connected to IRC and is powering like a web page that I have plugged into the stream overlay. But what I really want is an IRC bot, a separate IRC bot that can sort of serve the community in the uh, System Crackers IRC channel and, um, you know, pr provide certain functionality that uh, would be fairly interesting to have. Like, uh, let's say, maybe leaving a message for another user who is offline, which you know, is pretty common for IRC bots. Um, what else? Uh, making it possible to call back chat history, potentially. Like if you are trying to refer to something uh, or like uh, reply to old messages. I don't know. There's probably some interesting things we can do to make it uh, a little bit more friendly because IRC is pretty bare bones and it doesn't have a lot of the functionality of things like Matrix where you have conversation threads or... Um, uh, like persistent messages for other users, things of that nature. So we're going to try a, a few things like that. Uh, also, what I would like to do is uh, attempt to 
come on now, to make a, uh, a, a matrix bridge. Okay, let's say a simple matrix bridge because it's not going to be very uh, effective. R really, it's going to be one of these bridges where uh, there's going to be one account in IRC or matrix that is relaying the messages from all the other people and they're going to be speaking on their behalf. So it's, it's not, uh, not perfect, but it's better than nothing because right now we have nothing because the uh, matrix bridge was shut down oh so long ago, which is terrible. Uh, Benoit says, cool, first time I saw my fix in action. Yes, you fixed it. Thank you very much for fixing it, Benoit. It does work. Ashra says, uh, next up, broken UTF-8? Maybe. I think I think it does do UTF-8. Yes, if Ashra uh, wants to fix something, he could fix the UTF-8 support if it's broken. But so far, all the emojis are showing up just, just fine, so I think it's okay. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, one last thing I wanted to try to do. We, we probably won't get to all these things today, but we'll just, you know, see what we can do because it's, it's a laid back stream. It's all good. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, provide a way for community members to... <clears throat> um, register their IRC account or let's say connect their IRC account, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, there's things I wanna do in the chat. I've been mentioning this a few times where I want uh, certain people, like let's say, you know, uh, people who are sponsoring the channel, et cetera, like individuals who are sponsoring the channel for their names to show up in a, in a different way. And the only way to do that is to make sure that the person who's sponsoring the channel lets me know about their IRC account and I can trust that it comes from them. So um, the idea is that the uh, IRC, I guess the community member um, puts their name in a web page or IRC Nick, let's say. The IRC bot uh, contacts them via private message um, and asks them to uh, paste a token they got from the web page. Something like that. Just a simple little thing. Then while it says Kioxide, I don't know. You can link an email to a GPG key to an IRC account. We could do something like that too, but I mean, that's kind of like, not everybody can do these things. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that's sort of what I'm trying to go for today. And also, like, fun things. Let's say, add some fun commands of some sort. Uh, another idea that someone had in the forum, I believe, is, uh, make it possible to gather funny quotes from IRC and uh, relay them to the forum somehow. That could be abused a little bit, but I mean, maybe we could think of a nice way to uh, set that up just to have a little bit of fun. Cal says, I really should get on the board then. You should get on the board because it's fun. We have a good time there. Let me see. So I don't, let me, do I have all my alert stuff set up here? I think I do have it set up. Or I did have it set up. Whoops. Yeah, now you're seeing me change it, all my screens in OBS. Sorry for the, uh, the funny stuff here. All right, let me paste this in. Paste reference. Boom. Okay. I think that's why I didn't see the alerts last time when people were joining the channel because it was on a different uh, different scene in OBS and it uh, wasn't showing on the screen at all. Okay, so how we're gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna jump into projects code uh, crafter bot, let's say. I know that Benoit had made a project called crafter bot at some point in the past. I'm just gonna you know, steal the name. Yes. Okay, wait a second. Crafterbot slash uh, main.scm, we'll say. 
We'll save that so that it creates the directory. Did it create the directory? Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing we're going to need is a dot files, uh, Emacs, Elpa, Live Crafter. We need the Geeks Manifest for sure. We also need, I'm just gonna steal some stuff from my existing code to make this easier to start with. Cause you don't wanna see, sit around watching me just poke around the whole time. <clears throat> Anything else? We don't need the, the HTML parts. We just need that. Benoit says, yeah, I think the bot, the Elis bot is kind of dead. Haven't touched it in a long time. I think Guile might be a much better language uh, for, for e than Elis for, for a bot. Uh, yeah, it should be. It should be. All right, so this is the main SEM file. Cool. So what we'll do is, uh, dear local, let's see, add dear local variable and do that. And I can set, uh, what is it? Scheme mode. And then compilation command. No. The compile command. There it is. Compile command. Uh, Geeks shell m manifest SCM uh, guile main SCM. Also, um, trailing garbage following expression. Thank you very much. Makes me feel really good about myself. Was I supposed to make that a uh, string? Hey, Trev. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, I need to to enter a value here, not just a plain string. Geeks shell m manifest sem guile uh, main sem. Okay, that's all good. Now, if I go back to main, say uh, normal mode, just to sort of refresh the variables, and I should be able to say compile, and then the command is there. That's good. So. Let's uh, just change a few things up here. I'm gonna say crafter bot. I'll tell you a little bit about this. Uh, I don't know why this copilot thing keeps starting. I, I swear I, I turned it off in my config. We're not gonna deal with uh, passwords and stuff right now. Or Twitch. Just deal with uh, Libra chat. I'll explain some of these things in just a moment. I also should say we're using a library called uh, Guile IRC, which is kind of an old library, but it does work. Um, it might need some work here and there to make it do things we need it to do, but you know, so far it's been okay. This is a library that's part of Geeks, or it's in the Geeks package repository, so you can easily pull it into a project. Um, let me... Just uh, get rid of some extra junk in here. Oh, I forgot that I have Lispy on here. And Lispy is going to love me deleting lines. All right. So some of these things, I might need the JSON thing if I do the matrix integration. So um, what I'm doing is defining some um, basic configuration stuff. Uh, for instance, the um, the Nick, oh sorry, the uh, there's a variable for the IRC session which is false for now because we we're, we're gonna set it after we connect. Um, also the uh, Nick for the bot which I'll set later right about here, and then the channel I want it to connect to. I just put those there to make it a little bit more uh, oh easily configurable. Is the camera frozen? Sometimes it does, and then it fixes itself. Seems like it's fine now. Uh, Benoit says you should use DRM for Geek Shell and Emacs DRM. Okay. Shouldn't all that config state be in a separate file? Uh, yeah, later once this is better code, but for now it's just uh, getting it working. All right, so we're going to connect to LibreChat over SSL, port 6697. The real name is, uh, let's just say CrafterBot. Um, all right, and we're setting the value of Libra IRC to whatever comes from make IRC, which comes from the Guile IRC library. 
So that, that will start establishing the connection, but we need to install some handlers to make it possible to uh, <coughs> approve message. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that out. Thanks, Asharaz. Just do that for now. I don't know if it'll let me last too long without uh, uh, authorization, but we'll see. Um, so we install a couple handlers. You need the ping handler because um, an IRC server is going to occasionally send you pings, send the client pings, which the client needs to respond to. Otherwise, it will kill the connection. Uh, also, the printer is for logging purposes, and that's kind of useful just to... Oh, this is the Twitch. Yeah, let's just delete that. Um, the print hand, the print printer handler it prints out sort of a log of all of the stuff that comes through, which is useful for just sort of seeing what is happening. So we call do connect and do register. Register. I'm not exactly sure what that's doing. Let's actually check the code really quick. In fact. You know, I should probably just clone this repo so that uh, huh, I'm just going to the GitHub UI the whole time, right? All right, get some eShell in here. Just clone it in this folder so we can look at it really easily. Uh, Kyle, IRC, IRC. Uh, what was it? Uh, do register. Lena says, I'm looking at your code and I actually understand some of it. And that's, that's good. That's good. It's working. It's working. All right. Do register. Send Nick and user commands. All right. So this is basically where it's uh, identifying the bot user to the, the server. Yeah. Week two is going to get uh, cranked up a notch, which is good. A lot of this will make a lot more sense. <clears throat> So, um, try Nick, do command. So, it's, I think this do command is basically sending um, commands over IRC. I was using do priv message, but there's also do command somewhere else in here, I think. Maybe not. But we do need that register call. Otherwise, I think the connection can't uh, complete. Also, I'll take, well, let's see. In fact, let's do it this way. Yeah, you did not indent the region, did you? Okay. Connect chats, that's fine. Uh, message queue, that might be useful later. We don't need the HTTP server. So I'll just get that out of here. And then uh, threads, we would need a thread if we had the matrix polling going on at the same time. So we'll keep that around for now and just see how it goes. Um, also, we can get rid of the HTTP thread. Or let's comment that out for now. I know I'm just sort of glossing over some things here, but I'll, I'll explain it a little bit uh, in a second. Uh, response. Mm, we'll leave those for a second. So the other thing I wanted to do is make sure I could do all this in the REPL. Uh, let's do a little bit of REPL-driven development here. Uh, to do that, because I'm using a, a, a threaded design I need to use this co-op REPL server, which basically is a way to pull for REPL input uh, at the time whenever the app is ready for it. Otherwise, you're bound by the uh, redevel print loop of the normal Guile REPL. Uh, Willem says, maybe zoom in a bit. Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, let's see. Default text scale increase. Is that a bit better? Hey, Gun. All right. So... What was I saying? Yes, Dave says the good old co-op REPL server. Yeah, uh, people want to, to see its demise, but it works. It certainly works. All right. So I'm. Uh, this is the IRC thread uh, 160 for the USleep. Ah, it's the first thing Dave ever worked on for the upstream guile. Yes, it's definitely necessary for writing games. You need the co-op REPL server because you've got a, a tight game loop and you need to uh, pull the REPL while you're doing that. So can't really do that. Uh, oh, for the font size? Thank you. 136. Uh, is that good enough, probably? I, I need to, to calibrate all the fonts on this, on this uh, 
set up again. What editor is this? Zed? Yeah, of course, it's Zed. Uh, also, it's VS Code. It's both of them at the same time, right? Okay. So we did the connection setup. We we wait for the registration to complete, and then we join a given channel. So this is going to join the channel that everybody's in um, for the stream so that we can all pummel it with messages, which is going to be pretty funny. Running in Zelige, of course. Zelige. Zelige. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. I've already forgotten. Um, all right, and then this add message hook is a thing that comes from uh, Guile IRC where um, it's saying for a given IRC connection, we're gonna have this Lambda function that takes a message and then you just do whatever you want with the message. Um, in my case, uh, for the, the IRC overlay in the stream, I push a message to the queue, which goes to the polling for the client, but I'm not gonna need that here. Um, what I'll probably need is some kind of uh, set of handlers, but I guess there's already a handler logic for Guile IRC, but eh, why should I use what they did when I can just do my own? I don't know. Hubris. Okay, so I need some of this stuff because like, Things like uh, getting the prefix type and the prefix is good for analyzing messages, but maybe I don't need all this because some of this is related to uh, passing on messages to Twitch IRC. Uh, this push message part right here, message, I can't speak. Uh, when Nick is private message string. Okay, so the channel is Libra and it's not the Nick of the Twitch user, which we don't really need, I don't think. Then we do something with it. And here's where we, where we would call some kind of handler. Um, handlers, let's say. And, uh, whoops. Handle message. Gun says, eventually logged into the correct chat. Yes, this is uh, the most correct chat. So um, for now, we can just display the message, maybe. It's going to be a little redundant. Message. In fact, let's use format for that. Format uh, T message. I think that's the right syntax. Um, message trailing message. So this is some IRC terminology here. Oh, two, uh, two blog posts on making a matrix bot in Gauss scheme. That's cool. I didn't see that. Um, th there's no library for matrix in Guile, or at least there's not one in Geeks. Maybe there is one somewhere. This is probably a pretty common thing people need. Can I do that? Okay, good. At least Lisp Lispy still works for that purpose. So... Can we just run this thing and see if it does anything? Did I break it already? Uh, compile. We're not compiling, we're just running. I also need to tell it to listen, I think. Uh, let's see, what have I doing, done wrong? Uh, address already in use. Uh, oh, the REPL server. Okay. Am, am I configuring that? I must need to configure this. Uh, run guile. Guile. There we go. Oh, uh, really? Is that not the right command to use it anymore? Great. So, I'm not getting any uh, help. <clears throat> Doc. What I just do? Fantastic. Scheme mode. All right. So, um, Guile. Co-op REPL server. Nice job. Uh, cooperative REPL servers. I just saw Dave's blog post on the, on the matter. Uh, server socket. So do I have to give it a socket and I have to... Listen for connections on the server socket. Proper function the REPL server requires that it be called periodically. Yeah, of course. Um, Ah, make TCP server socket. So probably that's what I need. 
make TCP server socket, host uh, address port. And if you didn't know, this 37146, that's actually Guile. Or it looks like it says Guile, sort of backwards and upside down. A little bit of trivia for you there. Okay. Um, maybe I can do that here. <clears throat> How did I make this read only? <clears throat> Excuse me. I already have one running in the uh, the chat overlay app, so I have to, to do a separate one now. Uh, define uh, REPL server socket. This is going to be fun. Uh, port 3001. I told you to get out of here. Okay. I'm trying to think of a better. What is the, the number? Let's just do seven. Okay. That should be enough. Rebel server socket. I think this should work. Rebel server socket. And if we go back to compilation buffer, run this again. Uh, let's see. Unbound variable. I got to pull in system REPL server, I think. Yep. Then we'll be able to do this interactively, which will be much better. <laughs> Redacted says, are we, are we witnessing the start of the AI uprising live on stream? We're, we're just witnessing my Emacs config not cooperating. Uh, no, I, I, I did a stupid thing and I ran a mode that changed the ma major mode of the buffer. And then when I changed it back, it triggered copilot mode again. Let's see. Raise accession, wrong number of arguments to connect chats. Well, that makes sense. We'll just make an empty list there for now because we don't really need to do anything for that. And this should connect. Famous last words. Twitch IRC. Fine. All right, so I also need to change this logic because I don't have multiple IRC servers to pull anymore. So I can just drop that out and get rid of that. Message do listen server win message run message hook. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't need IRC servers anymore, okay. Wrong type in argument position one, server procedure uh, line 90. Oh, yes. It's, uh, what is it, Libra IRC? Okay. Everyone's favorite kind of stream, the one where I'm just making mistakes the whole time. Cool. It seems to have connected. Oh, this nickname is registered. I don't know. Benoit, did we register that nick in the past? I think we did. I'm trying to see if uh, I have a pass store entry. I don't seem to have one, but no. So as you can see in the output here, you, uh, you can see Ashra's message that says, hello, crafter bot. So the structure of these messages is there's a few different sections of the message. Uh, at the beginning, you've got like the, the colon that, that I think all of them start with on a new line. And then uh, the user details, priv message, which is interesting because it does, it's not a private message, it's a message in a chat room. But I, I'm, I guess they are distinguishing this message between like a global message that uh, happens for everyone on the server. Um, and then the channel that it's associated with, and then after the colon is the rest of the message uh, that actually is shown to the users of the channel. So, pretty simple. Uh, Ashra said, maybe because I put in the name. I don't know. And this message part here is uh, what I was writing out in my uh, stuff. So, 
let's connect the REPL and see if I can break things that way. Um, 37147, uh, Geyser Connect Local. Is that for a Geyser Socket Connect? No, it's a socket file. I don't want a socket file. I want a port. Ah, localhost. Okay, fine. Localhost uh, 37147. And here's a REPL, and that's in our existing process. Now, the question is, if I, I, need to, I need to move some of this code around if I want it to actually um, be changeable. And the reason why I say that is uh, for a REPL-driven workflow, you can't have a loop that has code that isn't calling functions that can be replaced at runtime. So all this code that's in this Lambda that's running in a thread, I can't really touch it because the thread's already running. It's already off on its, its little loop here, the while loop. Uh, the only thing I can really change, not even that. I mean, this stuff doesn't really need to change that much. Uh, what I can change is this uh, message handler here. So, oh no, I can't change that because it's a Lambda that's directly in the add message hook. So I think the first thing we would need to do is um, make a, uh, let's see, Libra message hook. It's not a, t not a good name, but whatever. It's going to be a function with a message parameter. And then I can just take this whole body and drop that in here. They says trampoline it. Yes. <clears throat> so um, there we go. So we got that there. I need to, to, to replace that with Libra message hook. And just get rid of this Lambda syntax right there. So... In fact, we could get rid of this connect chats bit and just throw that down in the thread initialization, I would say. And I could even have a function. Well, we don't need that. Uh, let's do that right here instead. Get rid of connect chats. So now we've added the message hook for Libra. In fact, that could even potentially go in the Libra IRC connect right after the do wait, let's say. Probably the right place to do that. So we'll end up re restarting this uh, in just a second. No more connect chats. We got Libra message hook function. I might need to define that first, but probably not. Uh, no, I don't need to define it first. All right, so we got that now. <laughs> Doesn't work, Trev. You're not going to get the fast one by me this time. Okay. I can't add a command like that, though. Just if people want to try it, I can add a new command, and then you can call it and break the bot. So we have the Libra message hook. Um, this is a god-awful mess. OK, that's because nothing is indented correctly, of course. OK, so we got the message hook. Uh, clean that up a little bit. Uh, on the IRC thread, we're just calling uh, Libra IRC connect, and then we run the loop. We pull the REPL server. <laughs> connect the bot to GPT. Oh boy, we could do that, but I think that's going to be a nightmare. I'll get my OpenAI account uh, blacklisted. When message, run message hook, and then that message hook will ultimately call this Libra message hook. Okay, so if we were to go and uh, kill this uh, connection and you can see the, the crafter bot dropped out of the channel as a result of that. In theory, if we restart, we should be able to reconnect and things should be working again in, in the ideal case. Okay, crafter bot is back in the channel now. Uh, let's see, test. Okay, so it, it is still uh, printing out the uh, messages. Now, I should be able to, to change this function and just reevaluate it. Oh, I need to, to reconnect to the REPL first, though. So, uh, control CZ, and that's in the geyser. I hope it did the right thing. <laughs> that's not going to work. 
geyser repl. Let's see if it if it works to change the um, let's see compilation uh, main SEM. Can I just do control X is undefined uh, geyser buffer. <laughs> I wonder if I did that the wrong way. Let's just kill this repl and, and start it again. Yes. Okay, so connect 3147. Is it gonna be connected to this buffer? No. That's annoying. Uh let's see. There's a way to set the buffer at the REPL geyser REPL buffer? Clear buffer? No. To like attach a buffer to a REPL. <clears throat> uh, I wonder why I didn't like it. I wonder if my geyser version is out of date. I wonder. Okay, let's let's look at that. Dot files. Uh, Emacs Elpa. Geyser. Okay, good. At least it's not installed by Elpa. It's installed by uh, uh, Eeks. So at least it's a little bit more uh, predictable. All right. So Geyser R2 says, uh, "Are you using Geeks?" Yes, I'm using Geeks. What I'm looking for is Geyser Connect Buffer to Repl. Blinding. Is it a function and not an interactive function, I wonder? Uh, geyser, REPL, buffer. Uh, set this buffer REPL. So where is that? Set this buffer REPL. Set up REPL. Set, oh, there's another one here. Start REPL. Well, geyser REPL, set this buffer REPL, current buffer. Uh, yeah, this is probably not gonna do the right thing. <laughs> Let's see. Nope. That's very strange, dude, because it works fine for me in other cases. Uh, Soito, I guess is how you pronounce your name. Do you prefer reading documentation in browser instead of going to info mode? Uh, it's a bad habit. I try to use info mode as much as possible. <laughs> I know there's a way to do this. Is that what I can do? Can I set that? No. Uh... Man, this is annoying, dude. Okay. I'm trying to make sure, I'm trying to get the uh, current buffer to be registered to send uh, expressions over to the geyser REPL that I have running. For some reason, I can't remember the... Doesn't do it. Uh, let's check the key binding, actually. Uh, control or control X. No commands. Back. Okay, it's, something's wrong with the, the geyser setup. Maybe it's my config actually. So uh, dot files, Emacs, modules, code, dev. What is it? Geyser. 
Geyser Connect? No, I, I used Geyser Connect and it didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, did, did, did Ari snarf, snarf the bindings? Is that what happened? That must be what happened. So you're telling me I'm going to have to... Uh, Oh, geyser mode auto. <clears throat> That's what the problem is. Okay, so maybe if I just restart that buffer. Okay, let's go back to uh, main.scm. We're going to kill that. And then open it again. And then check the binding of control all at X. There we go. That might work. Okay, so just a bad config issue. The REPL is still running. I should be able to use Control alt X here. And I got unspecified, so it must work. So let's go back to the compilation buffer. And if anybody says something like me, hello. It did not work. I wonder which REPL did it try to send that to. It, it sent it somewhere. Clearly. I changed the uh, message. Libra message hook. Ah, uh, you know what? I do need a trampoline like Dave said, because right here, I'm passing in the literal, uh, or I'm passing in the real function or procedure value of Libra message hook, and I can't replace the function there. So I would actually have to do this. Lambda message, uh, Libra message hook. And that's the only way that I'm going to be able to do that. Because add message hook is just adding whatever I'm giving it here to a list somewhere. And I can't change what's already stored there. There's a value, a procedure value that's being stored there. So I need to wrap it with something so that I actually have access to it. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but that's just the way it works with Scheme. I, I find it to be fine. You just have to remember how to, to do it. So because I had, I had to make that change, I'm going to restart the bot. All right, so now it's getting connected. I'm going to change this message to foo, and then we'll see if it works in just a moment. No guys are rebel for this buffer. How did I do that? No. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, it reconnected. Smart. Okay. Uh, possibly unbound variable. I don't think so. Oh. All right, so I think it might have started a new REPL rather than reconnecting. Let me do this. I'm going to kill this buffer. And then I'm going to use geyser connect inside this buffer. <laughs> Localhost uh, 37147. And uh, I'll run this again. And now in theory. Okay, finally, it works. We see now it, the message that I had here is now changed to foo. So we were able to reevaluate this function and get different behavior. Uh, cool. And also not so cool. <laughs> because I did something stupid here. And well, I think I took that out actually. Okay, that's fine. So we can do something different here. How about this? Define, uh, get out of here, Copilot. I swear to God. Not in here. Where is it? Anyway. Uh, message. Eh, we can just have some hard coded stuff here for now. We can make it a little bit more flexible later. So. What do we want to do? Fighters. What's that? All right. Oh, Foo Fighters. Yes. Well, Foo Fighters, pretty good. So we have a message, message trailing message. Uh, we can say handle message message here. Very, very nice, right? Um, I'm not going to run that yet. I need to have some, some kind of body here. So uh, we were looking at 
let's see, the priv message and then the trailing message part. So uh, let message text is a message trailing. Come on. The way this library is written does not work well with the uh, indentation in, in Emacs for scheme. All right, so we have message text here and then uh, we can do a, hmm. Trying to think of the best way to approach this. I just want to pull the, like, let's say we'll, we'll do something like this. Um, commands. Come on. I hate you, Lispy. Uh, let's see. Hello. We'll just say hello. Leap case and message test text. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to have to write a function for that unless I turn on copilot mode and let it write it for me. We want to go down that route. Okay. I mean, I guess I could just, you know, replace all E's with threes and that sort of thing, but let's not waste our time. I hate USB. Yes. Bot quote, I hate USB. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else can we do? S some suggestions. Anybody got suggestions? What commands we want to uh, have here? So uh, slap uh target let's say we slap someone around with a bit of trout what other things count <laughs> trev says that copilot might take us down into the side of a mountain something thank left pad okay there we go <laughs> left pad there's another bot in this chat. Uh, let's see, roll. We could do a little dice rolling thing, maybe. I don't know. Is it is it roll die though? It's not dice. It's die. Nobody really knows that though. Command units can run arbitrary code. Which, <laughs> I mean, I'm not using. Um, what they're doing and their stuff. I'm gonna write my own little handler for this for fun because I wanna have things be broken all the time. Okay. So I think I can just split the string. Um, split, string, split. There we go. String split. Oh. Okay, string split, uh, message text. Let's do a let star here. This is probably not the most efficient way to go about this, but I'm not too bothered by it at the moment. Uh, message text, and uh, we'll do a space on that. Ah, links, yeah, that's a good idea. Forum. <laughs> okay, so string split, and um, we can say the command Let's see. Um, ooh, um, man, parts. I guess I could do it a little bit differently. I could just, you know, search up to a certain, <coughs> excuse me, a certain character. But let's just do it this way for now. Command parts and pair command parts. Uh, car, man, parts. It's a little bit of terse logic here. And that's good for that. So now we can do a um, case on command. If it's uh, hello, now we need a, a way to write something back. And how was I doing that before? Chat.sem, um, do message, message. Push message? No. Uh, do priv message. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let me also do send message text. Simplify this a little bit. Uh, Libra IRC, Libra channel. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, so, so we have the send message. I'm gonna e eval that. Uh, possibly unbound variable message text. Yes, thank you. I did not actually say that, did I? <laughs> the Guile compiler can be helpful sometimes because it will catch you doing dumb things before you actually run the code. Uh, all right, so now inside this function, we can say send message. Should I make an exclamation point on that? Okay. Send message, uh, hello. Now, the other thing we might want is the, uh, the sender of the command, I think. So message, how was I getting that before? Um, prefix, if equivalent, uh, prefix type. Okay, so I think it's this one right here. Let's take that little snippet. Okay. So send message, I'll use format on that as well. T, okay, and then sender. That should be enough to start with, I think. So I've did that, now I'm gonna do this. All right, so. Do we have an error? Uh, no. Interesting. So let's do a little debugging, a little print line debugging here. Uh, display uh, command. We'll do a format on that, actually. Oh, what am I doing? I should be doing format uh, F on these, I think. Right? Because I don't want it to print on that. <laughs> so format T on this one. And this would be command. Unspecified datum hello cannot be meaningful compared using okay. What's the right way to do that then? Should I convert it to a symbol? Interesting. I think I'm gonna have to use cond for that, but I really don't want to use cond. Uh, scheme, case, uh, compare. Comparing, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to the Guile reference manual. <laughs> and then the procedure index. Uh, what am I looking for? Case, syntax, case, conditionals, case. Whoops, what did I just do? Yeah. There's a data-driven way to do this, but uh, <laughs> let's let's just do that do it this way for now. Yeah, here we go. Symbol to string command. Um, now it's, it's, we're, we got a different problem here. The problem is that the uh, case macro syntax doesn't like having a string because it can't use the normal comparison EQV, the equivalence operator on two strings because you need to use full equal. I mean, you, you could do it, but it's not a good practice, I think. Um, all right, so back to the REPL or compilation. Let's try this again. So I, I eval that. I'll just eval that again one more time for good measure. And then, oh, there we go. So we at least have, wait, hold on, like this is backwards. Wrong. It needs to be string to symbol. 
So it uh, kicked us out of the program. That's okay. We'll just restart it. All right, the bot is back. And we should be able to say something, right? All right, it worked, cool. So now we have one command. We can add some more commands, like we were saying before. Yep, see, it works. So we need to go outside of this and add one for, let's say, forum. <laughs> Oops. On this one, we can just say, uh, we can join the forum at, <laughs> wrong. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it didn't work, did it? I'm sure you'll find a bug at some point though. No geyser repl for this buffer. Let me go back and uh, clean this up. Connect. There it is. Now we can run this function again or eval that function. And now, there we go. So we got some uh, some basic commands starting here. What else do we want? Uh, let's see. We'll do a little count thingy-majig. Whoa, 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 what did I just do? There we go. And uh, counter, we also need to... Um, what is the function for that? Is there, there's no ink, like ink F, but there's like a one plus? No. Okay, anyway. <laughs> We're manipulating global state here. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. One times. <laughs> there you go. Now you can count my... Uh, make the bot count a bunch of times. Count reset? Yeah, we didn't add that yet. And uh, clearly it didn't trip on that, did it? I don't see an error. That's good. All right, so we're, we're doing okay so far. All right, so we got a few of these things. Uh, let's do one that takes a parameter. Okay, so what we need to do on this one it doesn't count for commands within text, only at the start. Uh, no, it just counts for that count command. I mean, you just hit count and it just increments the counter. <laughs> All right, so uh, how do we do a parameter on this? We have the command parts. Technically, I could just pull that. I could say... Uh, catter on command parts. Let's see if it works. Um, so, I don't know where this old uh, IRC thing comes from. Slapping someone around with a bit of trout, but I mean, I used to see it in, in uh, MIRC back in the day, so. I wonder what happens if you don't have that part. It's from MIRC? Yeah. Okay, and uh, now someone can feel free to break the bot by not putting in a target name. There it is. So easy. That was the intention, I trust.
You were supposed to do it. I know you were waiting the whole time for an opportunity to break the butt. Okay. So, uh, let's see. To make this a little bit more resilient. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta start the, the bot back up now. Yes, an interactive demo is supposed to be broken. Uh, let's see. Target. Um... You're behind the stream by 10 seconds. That makes sense. So, target. I need to make sure I'm going to do this in a way that's not going to cause a crash also. Because I can't just say cat or command parts. I need to make sure that there's a uh, value there first. So, if I say uh, pair, cutter. And catter, uh, I need to put this in here too. Command parts. Bit of lag in real time, yeah. It could be my, my computing setup today. <laughs> okay, so we got target here. If target. Otherwise, have a little bit of fun with you. Slaps themself, themself, himself. Cadatter, cadatter, cadatter. It's not a cadaver if you use cadatter. What did I do wrong? Oh, it's busted, right? Got to restart and then start to slaps themselves in their confusion. That sounds better, right? Slaps himself for forgetting the second parameter. All right, so if I do, uh, well, it should already be set up now. But I need to just connect the REFL anyway. <laughs> that grammar doesn't sound right, but that's the way we're going to do it. Okay, so... Um, that's cool. We got one that has a parameter. What else did we say we wanted to do? Left pad. Sure, left pad. Come on. Pull up the prompt. Where is it? Is this really killing my computer to do this? <laughs> what is happening right now? I'm just trying to copy an emoji for God's sake. Apparently it was enough to hang Emacs. Unless... Alright, we gotta figure this out. Proc Ed, what's going on here? Aside from OBS chewing up the whole system. Huh, okay. Weird. Uh, no, it's not blocking. It's not blocking. <laughs> okay. So, um, I was trying to copy an emoji. I'm just going to do it this way, aren't I? Folded hands. That's what it's called. Not praying hands. I guess you wanted to try to keep the uh, religious implication out of it. There we go. Hey. There we go. Okay, it worked, I think. Ha! Ooh, what is going on here? There's some other bot that's on left pad, apparently.
Unless Ashraz is just so fast. Yeah, Crafterbot said the right thing. I don't know what this other bot's doing unless there's someone pretending to be a bot in the chat. It wouldn't be the first time. Anybody remember uh, Sherry? Man, that was a long time ago. Haven't seen Sherry in uh, probably, what, a year and a half at least? <laughs> Have we really been doing this that long? Okay. Okay, so... Um... We got left pad, we got count, we got slap, we got hello, we got forum. Um, oh, yeah. Another another little meme. Just for fun. Those of you who've been in the System Crafters IRC the last two days know what I'm talking about. Not a bot yet. We're going to have competing bots in here. <laughs> Little homage. Okay. Uh, what else? Roll dice. That's easy. I guess the question is how many sides do you want? Bot war like on Discovery? Oh boy. Yeah, IRC bot war. Okay, so we can start with just a normal uh, six-sided die. Uh, format uh, F. And I think there's just a plain old... Whoops, what did I delete here? It's like a plain old random function that takes an integer, yeah, like the max. Uh, I think I need to do like a plus one on that. Probably, we'll see. Ashra says, I guess, you <coughs> excuse me, missed the Cal 1999 versus left pad discussion last weekend, maybe so. Don't forget the seed. Eh, I'm not that worried about seeding it. Uh, wrong number of format arguments. Ooh. You're right. Thank you, compiler. I'm spamming my own chat here. It seems to be working. Okay, so you can roll a dice. Wow. So cool. Not really. I'm just being facetious. Okay. What else can we do here? We said we wanted to try and do some kind of uh, validation thing. I don't know how easy that's going to be to implement right now. What else? What else? How about change the number face on the diet? Yeah, we could do that. Late night IRC gambling. Okay, so um, we'll do a similar thing. Uh, Let sides uh, and pair cutter command parts. If I type it correctly. I probably need to generalize the argument aspect of this so I don't have to keep doing the same logic over and over again. But hey. All right, so we got that now. Um, if sides, oh, let's not do that. Let's do it here. Uh, let's see, or yeah, we need to see if it's actually a number though. <clears throat> So maybe we should do a little bit more validation on that. Can we actually validate that? Is there any logic in Guile to say that a string is a number without throwing an, an error? 
Maybe there's like a try of some sort. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> it's, not, it's not set up yet, Benoit. All right, let's go to top and then go to procedure index and then um, let's see, number to string. Oh, okay. If it's not valid, that returns, <clears throat> excuse me, returns F. That's, that's perfect, actually. Okay, so then we can, we can definitely depend on this. Where was it? Uh, and sides, string to number. Yeah, that's good. I like that. It's getting a little bit gnarly, nesting it so, so low. Uh, sides. In fact, I mean, I could just do this logic up here, right? So if that's there, or, uh, yeah, that's right. String to number. There we go. And if it's, if it's not that, then I'm just going to default to six. All right. So then I can just go back here and just put that back to what, what it was. Eval seems like it's okay. All right. So roll 20. Uh-oh. What happened? <laughs> Did I break the logic somehow? Where is the REPL? Why didn't it update? Oh, roll dice. Maybe I should just call it roll, huh? Okay. <laughs> it works. Should I just say roll? I think roll is better, isn't it? Now it's roll. Okay, there you go. That's better, that's better. No more complexity. Okay, uh, cool. That's that. <laughs> okay, so it, clearly it didn't work. The scheme recognized that syntax. Is that what happened? Value out of range 999. Is it because... Let me just pull up a REPL real quick. I, I want to see this. I roll like that. That's right. Uh, let's restart. Go back to the REPL there. And then we'll start the REPL up again. As soon as it gets... Rolling. Rolling. Okay. So, uh, num yeah, it does understand the exponent syntax. That's one of the things about Scheme is that it, it could do um, exponential numbers. Number, oh, wait. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. String number, okay. So even negative one? Even negative one? That can't be right. Come on now. Um... Did it give us a stack trace? Argument one out of range, negative one. So random doesn't like negative numbers. Okay, I guess we gotta also check to make sure that uh, we're not getting negative numbers. Roll nil, yeah, those won't have a problem. You know, I don't think Scheme could do Roman numerals. <laughs> I also need to check. All right. Or, and, greater than zero, sides, sides, or default to six. Hey, whoa. Yeah, do it that way. So, uh, it's either sides is not false. Or it's greater than zero. And it's greater than zero. Or it's six. 
take the abs number eh i don't know i guess i could do that but it, it's what's what's worse using the default number or uh using the absolute value which is not what was asked for maybe maybe abs is better uh let me see is abs just plain there in the global environment to start with let me rerun this first Zos says, I'm always surprised that Lisp-based language has never caught on in the infosec world since the first instinct of the most Lispers to see how to break their code. Yeah, I don't know. It takes someone actually writing Lisp code first. Uh, who said that? That was weird. Dude, let, let me have the bot on for like 10 seconds. Jesus Christ. I can't fix it. What happened this time? Value out of range again. It's okay, dude. It's okay. I'm just joking around. Uh, value out of range 999. So that's clearly a run geyser. Let's just take a look at that. Uh, number, no, no, string to number. I'll just have it uh, ignore all commands from Ashras. Uh, number E. 1 to E999. Value out of range. Okay, so what is in what is in range? That's fine. <laughs> so 999 is not cool. Alright, so I gotta remember how to catch uh, errors in uh, in Guile. So if I go to info whoa, is, is info buffer gone now? Okay. I must have killed it. Oh, here we go. Um, concept index. <clears throat> Catch. No. What is it? Condition? Uh, raise. Guard. What is the, what is the, the nomenclature for this? I've forgotten what it was. This is really unimportant. I shouldn't even be bothering with this right now. Yeah, there's no catch. Let's go to the procedure index. Catch. Okay, so there is a catch. What the hell? Why didn't it come up in the concept index? Is it is it under exceptions? Because I wouldn't think it would be called exceptions, but maybe it is. Catching exceptions? Yeah. As always, Ashraz has the uh, exact place in the info manual at hand. Okay, so with exception handler. There we go. So with exception handler. We don't need all this extra stuff, I think, because it's probably for continuations. Thanks, Dave. Uh, with exception handler, lambda exception, apply handler. Just ignore it, right? Maybe I just want to ignore it. So anytime I'm doing some kind of conversion, I need to ignore the, the thing that happens. Now, is there a way to, to return a value of some sort? I guess it's in this lambda, right? I could probably just return a value from the lambda and it will... Okay, so the second thing is the expression, I think. Uh, with exception handler. Where's the syntax? Okay, so it's, it's treating it as a thunk, a, a procedure to be invoked. Let's do that. Let's just see if we can prevent Ashras from breaking the system. Zo says, just make it behave as a D6 and tell people it can do other numbers and they are just rolling poorly. Yes, I agree. Unwind T, you need that? Okay. Thanks, Dave. All right, so we got this logic here. Uh, right around the side, the, the time I want to do the string, the number, I need to wrap that in this lovely syntax. This thunk is going to become a lambda with no parameters. That's what a thunk is. Uh, I'll take the unwind for type out. Hey, Jose. Nice to see you. 
All right, so lambda and the lambda is uh, this part. So if the lambda throws an exception, then the handler should be able to uh, do something else, which in this case, I'm just gonna return the default value of uh, six, let's say. Or I could I could return an error message of some sort to the, the person who passed it in. I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, unbound value counter. I think I'm not in the right place. Let me go back to the REPL. I haven't restarted the app yet. Okay. Uh, Ashraz is saying, is the online manual at GNU.org out of date? I found that we were searching for Guile concepts on search engines. Somehow it finds an older version of the Guile manual and it will just give the, those links to you and you won't realize it's happening until you look at the URL. And uh, there are enough differences between the pre 2.0 versions of Guile to 2.0 and beyond that um, you can get yourself in some trouble with that. Okay, Geyser Connect, localhost. 3147. Okay, so now Ashraz, do the honors. See if this works. It may still crash. I don't know. Let's try it. <sighs> Gotta wait for the stream delay to kick in. Okay, cool. I think it caught the exception. Maybe it didn't, though. Try, try okay, good, good, good. Roll the four. I think it picked a six. Excellent. Oh, the negative still? Come on now, that can't be right. Wrong, oh, wrong type argument in position one. For what? Something else. Uh, 141. Okay. Who knows? That's not a very helpful error message. Uh, main 40. Okay, that's the add message hook. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty um, unclear. That's okay, that's enough for now. I mean, it's enough of uh, trying to catch the errors. It, it needs to be more robust. Make this handle negative. Numbers. I mean, I think it should have handled that already. Discuss Easter eggs. Okay, what kind of Easter eggs do you want? What kind of Easter eggs? I'm going to take roll out right now because it's a liability and I want to be able to, uh, to do this. I'm going to get the intern to write some unit tests. We don't do unit testing here, man. Don't you already know that I, I just like ship code to production without any testing? <laughs> roll the computer. I need to roll my computer out the window. That's right. Uh, give me a second. I'll get, I'll get it back online. Okay, we did that. Uh, bu 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 compilation buffer. Compilation. Where are you? Did I break that already? Okay, so let's get run compile again. All right. There we go. Get back into the main SEM buffer. Switch this one over as well. There we go. Yes, we're doing the unit testing live. Yes, uh, Ash <coughs> excuse me, Ashraz is doing the QA testing here. Test module is called Ashraz. That's correct. Now roll is disabled. Uh, what did Peter say? Roll, Rick. Oh, yeah, that could work. That could work. If the bot just starts singing, never going to give you up in the chat. Do a barrel roll, Jose says. Throw a bad taste exception. Send a URL of Rick on the web. I think Summer Rick rolled somebody in the IRC the other day. That was fun. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, is there anything else useful we could do just as an example? Um, I wonder, how do private messages work? So like if, if someone were to send a query to me right now, like a private message, like slash MSG. I could do it myself, I guess. What's it look like? It doesn't have a room. So what does that do in the code, I wonder? <laughs> okay. 
roll soccer ball. Yeah, the roll command, I disabled it because Ashraz did such a good job of crashing the, the bot every time I turned it on. Uh, let's see. So I think the channel part is the middle section. If I were to check the middle section. Yeah, I'm not actually checking that. Spawn a thread to process commands. I, I am on a thread. Can we do eval? No, 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 no. We're not doing eval. I would have to have a way to sandbox that, and I can't figure that out right now. Uh, let's do a handle private message, maybe. Define um, handle private message. <laughs> well, Ashra's laughs about the thought of eval. Yeah, that's that's just asking for trouble. We're going to end up... Like, somebody's going to figure out how to uh, spawn a shell process to launch my browser to go to some terrible website. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Handle private messages. It's just message, right? Okay. Ah, ask the bot how long they're running. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. I haven't actually tried that yet. I'm trying to do time operations, basically. On a priv message, if the channel name is the name of a user, it's a message. Oh, is that how it works? I don't think I saw it, though. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Oh, the priv message has to be the nick of the uh, account. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we do need like a command thing. Okay, so. <laughs> you know, it's the same, right? I just need to take this part out. So if I if I change handle message, um, it's not target. What would you call it? Room. <laughs> and if room starts with a hash, it's a room. It's a chat room. Otherwise, it's a nick. <clears throat> Okay. But that would require... Let's do something different. Let's not do that. Let's do it this way. So handle private message. We're going we're gonna to make sure... So and Nick. Let's call that room instead. Uh, let's say when it's a room and it's equal to private message, then we go into this uh, block here. Uh, if... I should do this. Wait. Yeah. Oh, that's the that's the nick of the sender. I sh I shouldn't have changed that. <laughs> Is that right? I'm very confused now. What did I do wrong? So Nick is uh, that and Nick. Okay, that's fine. So let's call it sender. And it's a private message. Then we can... Jump in here. If oh, where did my mouse or my cursor go? If um, well, maybe this needs to be like a cond. So if it's a uh, Libra channel, then handle message message. Otherwise, if uh, string equal message middle message. What was it, uh, Libra Nick? Huh. 
I'll get rid of this here. Is that good? All right, so handle private message. Let me just do a little quick job on this one. Need a similar deal here. Maybe we won't bother with uh, fancy command handling right now because we're about to be out of time. What I can do. Oh, I forgot my uh, extra parens around. Uh, that one, right? Okay. Should I? I shouldn't have to do that again. The sender bit. I should have sender in there as part of it. Sender. And this needs to have handle private message, message sender. All right, so if we got the message text, then what I can do is uh, send message. All right, so send message. Maybe we should recipient. Let's do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I got to go back through and change all these. How about this? Send. Ah, crap. Wrong. Okay, that's better. <laughs> there needs to be a David Will command. Is that what I'm seeing? Okay, so uh, we got the private message. We can say send message uh, to the sender and format. That should be good enough as a response. Now, I need to reeval all these things. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure that I'm not making a huge mistake. Uh, I think we also need a command that says what my battery percentage is, but that would require some extra work. Hey, Judy. USB, yes. All right, so send message. Now, we're, we're definitely going to break here, for sure. Uh, let's see. Message text, recipient. Possibly unbound variable. Do priv oh, okay. Am I in the wrong REPL at this point? I think so. Hold up. REPL? Yeah, that's what happened. Geyser connect. <laughs> Got that. So send message. Okay, handle message. Handle private message. Message hook. And uh, go back to the compilation buffer. All right. So message. Yeah, that actually worked. But I, I'm not printing it out on the screen so that you can see that someone sent a message. So how about I do that? Okay. 
Okay, now somebody send me a message. Did the stream die? What the hell happened? Wow. Are we back? Wow, that, that was weird. There was like a momentary blip in the connection and I dropped a whole bunch of frames, but then it came back. Yes, I see on my screen right here that uh, that Ashras told me something, so that's good. Never died? Okay, good. I don't know how that happened. Well, alrighty. I mean, I think that we uh, made some progress. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, it, it's, it's the beginning of something... Uh, that's pretty useful. This is more than I've ever done writing any chatbot before. And it's all with the power of scheme. I imagine that there's probably a lot of command handling stuff built into Guile IRC that I didn't even bother looking at. But I think it was a bit more fun just trying to, to write this ourselves. And uh, see how far we can get with it. <sighs> there we go. Now we have some uh, bot to bot interaction going on. Thanks to uh, Ashraz and Leftpad. So I will uh, drop this code in the show notes for the week in case anybody wants to just take it and play with it. Uh, it's not the best code in the world, but it will get you started. If you want to write a IRC bot, there you go. If you want to write an IRC bot with, um, with Scheme, because I don't know, like, if you want to learn Scheme, then you got to have some kind of project to work on. And I think this is kind of a cool project to, to do because uh, it has some utility. But we don't need to have like, you know, 15 people with uh, with bots coming into the System Scrapper's chat. So let's try to keep it uh, reasonable here. If somebody wants to play with bots, we can create a special little room where everybody can put their bots in and have them fight each other. Uh, but let's not do that in the main System Scrapper's chat. Push the code to source hut? Yeah. Actually, I think I got the text wrong on that. What was it? It wasn't Emacs in the profile. What did he say? Emacs mention in the profile? Is that what it was? What did I put in my profile today? Uh, Emacs mention in the profile. Okay, I think that's the literal phrase that was used. Okay, uh, that's it, I think. I gotta go and eat some, uh, some pizza now for my birthday, because today's my birthday. Um, I, yeah, we'll be back next week with something. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, we will have plenty of time to think about it between now and then. Um, I might start doing some more uh, programming streams and stuff soon. Not necessarily on Fridays, but maybe other days of the week. So um, if there's things that people are interested in seeing sort of hacking system crafting wise let me know because uh I, I would love to do some more um coding live coding i love live coding it's fun especially whenever you have you know 50 people watching you and heckling you and also trying to crash what you're writing at the same time much much uh, much more fun that way in my opinion thank you very much for the birthday wishes i appreciate it big Edie says bring you back flux harmonic yeah that will happen it's not going to happen immediately but Let's say two, three months, maybe. I'll start doing some Flux Harmonic stuff regularly again. Um, I would like to definitely do some game jams. When is the next Ludum, Ludum Dare? Uh, there might be one in April or May. Uh, April 12th. I could probably do that. And then October. Glennon says Wayland config on geeks. Yeah, we're definitely going to start uh, doing some streams about that uh, pretty soon. Maybe maybe Wayland config in general, and then eventually rolling that into uh, geeks. I think something must have happened on the Twitch side. Uh, Peter says uh, System Crafters bots is born. Yeah, we're going to have to have some kind of you know battle royale channel for. Uh, for IRC bots written in different languages and see which one can crash the other. That would be pretty funny, actually. 
Hmm. Actually, I kind of like that idea. Kind of like a hackathon, but the, the whole point is to write bots that IRC bots that battle each other and see what happens. It's probably been done before, but ah, you never know. Maybe we could you know, make that a new thing. All right. Thank you very much, LeftPad, for all the help uh, today for making sure that the stream came online. All hail LeftPad. Bataton. Yes. That sounds kind of weird, though. Okay, folks. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. I appreciate your patience with me while I get everything set up on this other machine again. But soon, I'm going to have a new computer that's going to be super stable, and we're not going to have this problem anymore. And the stream is going to be incredible. The quality is going to get much higher, so we'll see when that happens. Hopefully, it's soon. Uh, and uh, like I said, thank you all for being here, and I hope you all have a great weekend. And until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.